right, guys, welcome to the corner where we talk about anime, manga, and everything in between. Today, we're talking about Interview with a Monster Girl, episode three. In this episode, we get a lot of good detailed uh, information when it really comes down to it. It's more like a happy go lucky moment in time uh, where uh, Haku, Haku and Maki are both uh, having fun in their school lives and doing what they need to be doing because they're enjoying it at this point while still being there talking to Taki about what's been going on. Taki finally reveals to, the, to uh, Hikari that he's doing a little interview type situation, doing a little uh, write-up stuff about their eating habits and stuff like that, whatever he's been asking them for questioning. On top of that, we have Sato, who ends up having a really big crush on him at this point as well, and it becomes a big endeavor for her because she's a succubus, but she doesn't want a guy to view her in a sexual way like it will end up happening with a suc because of what a succubus does. But that's not without saying that a love can't happen for Tato. Uh, it's just that she tries to avoid any humanly contact with male uh, individuals, and it becomes a big thing. Her aphrodisiac sand type situation ends up guys just falling for her left and right. Well, what ended up happening at one point is she actually bumped into Take, if I remember correctly, and Take walks away and says, No, it's okay, don't worry about it. And finally gets around the corner, and he's just like, And this is literally how he was. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Did she me? No? Okay. This unfortunately makes it to the point where she ends up uh, falling for him even more because she he wasn't enticed by her, at least visually from what she could see. But this isn't really about uh, Sato uh, or even uh, Hikari or Maki. We are actually talking about the Ice Woman this time. This episode was pretty much dedicated about her, and it was kind of like a secret undertone of the whole episode. It had a lot of things that were going on in it, yes, but there was one part in the episode that was to lead up into the next episode at that point. We learned a lot about Sato in this episode, but Sato was not the important part here. She's so talking to me, the uh, Ice Woman. I think that's how you say her name. I gotta really get it down, honestly. It's a longer name. It's a little bit harder to pronounce, but uh, she ends up having a really hard time, and Tom is actually trying his hardest to get to her and talk to her and see if he can't uh, have a little interview and uh, have this discussion with her because he sees through the other Demis that they do need somebody to talk to and somebody that can, will be there for them. It gets pushed to the point where uh, she ends up going into a fit of depression uh, towards the end of the episode and she's upstairs and Taki finally gets a chance to actually meet up with her and talk to her for once. And this becomes a big deal in some cases, but me, myself, I'm we have to, I'm still waiting on the next episode to know what's going on, because I really want to see what happens if she uh, spurns him and says, no, go away, or something like that, or if she sits there and talks to him because he's a teacher. And I can really see uh, 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 Susakabi uh, actually falling for him and actually Things ended up, uh, ended up going in that way because Saki is a really well matured guy. And in a uh, big uh, situation that ends up happening is with uh, Sato. Uh, she ends up uh, talking to Maki about this whole uh, situation because Maki reveals to her that she has a crush on him. And Sato, Sato is just like, I have a crush on him too. So they have a little conversation as well about this whole, the whole demeanor of uh, our main character, Take. And I'm really can't wait to get in the next episode to see what happens with the Ice Woman herself. I'm gonna hopefully get that name down as soon as I can, but this just was filled with a lot in it and there's a lot of storyline basis in it and it flowed very well for the anime in general. There was a lot in on it and there was a lot that went with it. Um the animation stayed uh, well, and the, I, I gotta applaud on the expressions on these uh, on the anime characters' faces because you can tell when there's something wrong, what's going on with them, what's that, and the tune ends up happening, and you can't really see that too much with a lot of anime characters. I know that because I've watched a lot of anime, <laughs> but uh, like 
it's usually you get to see it if it's at more on an extreme. You can, uh, this, they have more natural flooring faces than this one. I don't know. It's weird for me. I digress, though. Um, this anime was really good, and it flowed well, guys. Um, I can't wait to get to the next episode, and I definitely did love uh, the undertone of what the show, this episode was really about, and how they kind of snuck it in to give you like a prequel of what's going to happen in the next episode. They've been doing it episode by episode so far, one with Sato and two uh, this episode, and now with uh, uh, Tsubasa, uh, no, the Ice Woman, and I'm going to try this time, <laughs> and... It just flows pretty well from episode to episode. It gives you reason to go into the next episode, to watch the next episode, see what's going to happen next episode. And they're still lingering the whole Sato thing uh, up, uh, up, uh, up up our heads as well because they aren't really bring that into fruition. It's more that she's starting to become more active in the situation at hand. But I love it. I'm enjoying getting to that next episode now. So until the next time, you guys, I hope you guys have a great day and a fun one as well.